the low throughput of the programmable blockchains is becoming a bottleneck for the DeFi ecosystem. Two platforms, Polygon and Avalanche, are trying to solve this problem. Now, Matic is the native token of Polygon and Avax is the native token of Avalanche. Let's talk about these two assets as well as these two platforms. Polygon, which was earlier known as Matic, was founded by three founders in 2017. In 2017, 3.8% of Matic token's max supply was issued. In April 2019, another 19% was sold. Now coming to Avalanche platform, it is managed by Ava Labs, which was founded in 2018. And the AVAX tokens were launched in September 2020. Now let's talk about the market cap and supply for these two assets. As of 26th November 2021, the Matic token has a market cap of 13 billion compared to 25.8 billion of AVAX tokens. The total supply for Matic token stands at 10 billion compared to around 395 million for AVAX tokens. The Matic token has a max supply of 10 billion compared to 720 million for AVAX tokens. Now let's talk about the technology behind these two assets. Matic is the native token of the Polygon platform and is an ERC20 token running on Ethereum blockchain, whereas AVAX is the native token of the Avalanche blockchain. Polygon uses proof of stake consensus mechanism, whereas Avalanche has its own consensus mechanism called Avalanche consensus. As mentioned before, Polygon and Avalanche both are trying to solve the throughput or the scaling problem in blockchains. So what is this scaling problem and what are the possible solutions to this problem? Can blockchains replace traditional financial systems? Let's start with one example. Can blockchains replace traditional payment networks? Yes, blockchains are open systems, can be anonymous, can allow faster settlements, etc. But what about scale? As per various sources, Visa can handle up to 1700 transactions per second. Now let us compare that with most popular blockchains. Bitcoin can handle maximum 6 to 7 transactions per second and Ethereum 15 to 20 transactions per second. The rapid growth of the decentralized finance ecosystem has created an urgency to solve this problem, especially for Ethereum and other programmable blockchains. Network congestion results in lower transaction throughput and higher fees and can throttle the growth of the DeFi ecosystem. So how can this scalability problem be solved? There are two approaches to solving the scalability problem. Let us understand this with an example of an automobile assembly line. Say an assembly line can produce 10 automobiles in one hour. Now the company wants to scale up the production to 50 automobiles per hour. What are the options? Option 1. Upgrade the current assembly line with faster machines to increase the assembly speed. Option 2. Offload some of the assembly tasks to smaller assembly lines which work in tandem of the main line. These assembly lines, the smaller assembly lines, can take care of some of the tasks such as engine transmission assembly or wheel assembly and make the main line faster. The first approach in the context of blockchain scaling would be called layer 1 scaling and the second approach would be called layer 2 scaling. Layer 1 means the main blockchain network itself that is, in case of Bitcoin, it is the Bitcoin blockchain itself and in case of Ethereum, it is the Ethereum mainnet itself. Layer 1 scaling means improving the base blockchain protocol itself 
to make the overall system more scalable. Layer 2 protocol is a third party integration that can be used in conjunction with a layer 1 blockchain. Layer 2 scaling entails shifting a portion of the blockchain protocol's computational burden to another system architecture, which then handles a major part of the network's processing and only subsequently reports back the main blockchain to finalize the results. Now let us quickly review some layer 1 and layer 2 scaling solutions before we talk about Polygon and Avalanche. Some layer 1 scaling solutions are improvements in the consensus protocol of the blockchain and sharding. Many major blockchains including Ethereum are still using proof of work consensus protocol which is slow and inefficient. Ethereum 2.0 is moving to proof of stake consensus which is expected to help scale the Ethereum blockchain. So this is a kind of layer 1 scaling with improvements in the Ethereum's consensus protocol. Sharding is the most popular layer 1 scaling solution. What happens is instead of making a network sequentially work on each and every transaction, sharding breaks down this transactional database into smaller databases and the network then processes this smaller databases parallelly, making the processing faster. Now coming to layer 2 scaling solutions. As mentioned before, layer 2 scaling entails shifting some of the transactional burden of the main blockchain to another system. Some examples of layer 2 scaling are nested blockchains, side chains, and state channels. A nested blockchain is essentially a blockchain within or rather atop another blockchain. The nested blockchains act as children to the main blockchain. The OMG Plasma project is an example of layer 2 nested blockchain infrastructure. Now coming to sidechains. A sidechain is a separate blockchain which runs in parallel to the main blockchain and operates independently. It has its own consensus algorithm and it is connected to mainnet by a two-way bridge. This sophisticated cryptographic mechanism enables tokens and other digital assets move back and forth freely between the main chain and the side chains. The liquid network on Bitcoin blockchain is an example of a side chain. Now coming to state channels. A state channel is a second layer scaling solution that reduces the total number of on-chain transactions by moving some of the transactions off-chain. What it does is it allows the participants to transact more number of times off-chain while only submitting two on-chain transactions. Now we understand layer 1 and layer 2 scaling solutions. So let's talk about Polygon. Polygon is a protocol and a framework for building and connecting Ethereum sidechains. As mentioned before, a sidechain is a separate blockchain which runs in parallel to the main blockchain and operates independently. It has its own consensus algorithm and it is connected to the main net by a two-way bridge. Polygon was launched as Matic sidechain which uses proof-of-stake consensus mechanism. Now the sidechains created by Polygon protocol can benefit from the Matic validator network. Polygon offers two types of chains, standalone chains and secure chains. Polygon claims of up to 65,000 transactions per second on a single sidechain along with a respectable block confirmation time of less than 2 seconds. Polygon is already handling more than 7.4 million transactions per day or around 86 transactions per second. The transaction cost on Polygon is around 0.05% 
of the ethereum blockchain now matic is the native token of polygon and is an erc20 fungible token running on the ethereum blockchain the tokens are used for payment services on polygon and as a settlement currency between users who operate within the polygon ecosystem the transaction fee on polygon side chains are also paid in matic tokens as mentioned before the matic side chain uses proof of stake consensus so the matic token holders can earn excess returns by staking matic tokens and becoming validators now coming to avalanche avalanche is a layer one blockchain that functions as a platform for decentralized applications and also for custom blockchain networks while polygon is strengthening the ethereum blockchain by allowing higher transaction throughput and lower fee avalanche is a rival to ethereum and wants to replace ethereum as the primary network for DeFi protocols avalanche allows building fast and low cost dApps and also deployment of blockchains both private and public avalanche claims to be able to handle a transaction throughput of up to 6500 transactions per second while not compromising scalability this is achieved through avalanche's unique architecture the primary network of avalanche has three subchains the exchange chain the platform chain and the contract chain each subchain has a specific purpose as of 26th november 2021 avalanche is processing 700000 transactions per day or around 8 transactions per second the all time high transaction per second has been 869 and avalanche has more than 905000 unique addresses avalanche transaction fee is considerably lower than ethereum but recently touched 10 us dollars with rapid increase in the platform use now coming to avax avax is the native token of the avalanche network and is mainly used for consensus mechanism and for paying network fees now let's compare the trends for these two tokens matic and avax let's start with the market cap trends we can see here a rapid rise in avax token market cap especially after end of july whereas the growth of market cap for matic has been subdued comparatively now if we compare the 24 hour trading volume for these two tokens we see that the matic token trading has been really high during middle of 2021 especially between may and july but then kind of died out whereas the trading for avax picked up after end of july now let's compare the price trends for these two tokens we can see here that the matic price trend has been positive throughout the year for 2021 whereas for avax the price trend has been subdued in the beginning of the year but then picked up after end of july now let's compare the trends in returns for these two assets for both these assets the year 2021 started in a negative trend in rolling 30 day returns for matic the year started with slightly negative trend and the negative trend became severe after end of april and then again it, the trend became positive after end of july for avax the year started with severe negative trend in 30 day returns and the negative trend continued till around june and then improved after that now coming to 
trends in rolling 90 day returns for matic the trend in 90 day returns has been completely opposite to the trend in 30 day returns that is the year started in a positive trend and continued till around end of april middle of may and the trend crashed after that for avax the trends in 90 day returns has been pretty similar to the trends in 30 day returns that is the year started in a negative trend and improved in the middle of june now let's compare the average 30 day return and volatility of return for these two assets for the period 1st january to 25th november 2021 we can see here that for this period the average rolling 30 day return has been higher for matic and the volatility also is slightly higher and the sharp ratio with a risk free rate of 1.62% is slightly higher for matic compared to avax now let's compare the average in 90 day returns and the volatility of returns for these two assets for the same period that is 1st january to 25th november 2021 we can see here that the average 90 day returns has been considerably higher for matic than avax but the volatility is also considerably higher in 90 day returns for matic and the sharp ratio is actually pretty similar between matic 90 day returns and avax 90 day returns now till now we are considering these two assets separately what happens if we want to put them together as a portfolio will that make any difference to do that we have to first compare the correlation between the returns for these two assets we can see here that the correlation of rolling 30 day returns for these two assets is 0.21 whereas the correlation of rolling 90 day returns for these two assets is 0.39 so what it says is the returns are not really correlated for these two assets now if we create an optimum portfolio my model gives me the optimum portfolio for 30 day returns is 60% matic and around 40% avax whereas for 90 day returns it is around 30% matic and 70% avax now you can choose your holding period for these two assets and create an optimum portfolio based on the holding period the scaling problem is a real problem for the defi ecosystem polygon and avalanche are using different approaches to solve this problem and time will tell who will be more successful with this this is sam hosh thank you very much for watching bye bye